Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today we are finally going to talk about a novel by Philip Fricasse. I am so stoked to have finally gotten around to reading Philip Fricasse. I have heard so much about him over the last year. I have three of his books that I'm really hoping to get through this year. Um, a Child Alone with Strangers, which was on my most anticipated reads of 2022 list. Um, Gothic, which comes out in February, and Boys in the Valley, which is a reprinting of a novel I think that he released in 2021, if I'm correct on that. Um, but so many people told me to check out his work, so many people have recommended this, and so many people sung such high, high praises of A Child Alone with Strangers, and I picked it up. It was way longer than I thought it was going to be. It is just under 600 pages. Um, I read it in about a week, um, and was just thoroughly thrilled with this novel. So I'm going to read the inside flat for y'all before I give you my full dissection. So it says, when nine-year-old Henry Thorne miraculously survives an accident that claims his father's life, he finds himself changed. Upon waking from a coma, he can now read people's thoughts, see their feelings. While Henry recuperates and grapples with his newfound abilities, his family is compensated a small fortune by those responsible for the accident. The highly publicized case catches the eye of lifelong criminal Jim Cady, who hatches a plan to kidnap Henry for ransom. When Jim's plan goes into motion, Henry is taken, hidden in an abandoned farmhouse surrounded by miles of forest, while Jim and his crew wait for the drop. But upon arrival, Henry's abilities alert him to something surprising and horrible. They are not alone. Henry connects with a strange force living in the woods and uses that bond to wreak havoc against his captors. Unknown to Henry, however, is that the ancient being has its own reasons for wanting the interlopers gone. There is something hidden beneath the house, tucked away in the dark, damp root cellar, waiting for its return. Okay. <clears throat> also, please excuse how chapped my lips are. It's the weather in New York has been like, just cold and rainy and dry and awful. <laughs> Anyhow, um, this book is very fun. I really enjoyed the writing style. It reminded me a lot of Ronald Malfi and Tim Meyer, who were two horror authors that I really, really love. Um, I absolutely adored Henry as a character, and I really liked his story arc. Um, he's a very, very tragic figure. He has a lot of terrible things happen to him. Um, and he goes from kind of being this innocent victim to a victim who empowers himself, and yet by the end of the book, I don't necessarily know if he's ever able to escape his trauma. I think his power is really, really cool. He has the ability to read minds through feelings, emotions, and colors, which is something um, I haven't really seen done this way before. Um, and I also really, really love pretty much the way Philip Fricasse framed all of his characters. Um, we obviously have um, Henry's father, who is sort of a pivotal figure throughout the novel. Um, I won't talk too much on that with it because I don't want to give anything away. His aunt and his uncle. I loved the character of his aunt. I thought it was really cool how she went from being an aunt to a mom when it was needed. And I thought she was a very, very believable character. She's not a huge character, but her reactions felt very real and very human and not um, super fictional. Um, his uncle was great. His reaction, both of his... Um, aunt and uncle's reactions to him being taken I thought was very, very realistic. Um, and I absolutely adored Sally Espinosa, who is the FBI agent, um, trying to solve um, Henry's kidnapping. This is part horror story, part like crime thriller, detective, mystery solve um, story. So if you have all the answers beforehand, I really loved the idea of being able to know exactly who the kidnappers were and where Henry was and then watching um, the FBI team kind of slowly piece it all together and how that was all um, figured out. I thought it was very well done and it really left me intrigued in the storyline even though I already knew the answers, um, which is again something you don't normally see. And then you get to Henry's kidnappers and they were all so interesting. I feel like the first introductions that we get to them, Philip Fricasse might not have had a full idea of who these characters were, because I feel after about 20% of the time that they are on the page with you, that they kind of develop and grow into more um, developed characters that stray a little bit from the initial 
interpretations that I got from them when I first met them. My first impressions of them are very different than how I see them now. Um, and I don't know if that was like a drafting issue, but Jenny, being Jenny, her whole thing is she's a, um, like a psychopath, a sociopath. I think she's a psychopath. Um, her first introduction, she does not have that, um, personality at all, in my opinion. Um, I think the way that Pete evolves kind of is counter towards the way that we see him at the beginning. Um, I feel like they consistently mentioned that Greg was very ugly at the beginning, at least through Henry's eyes, and then that never comes up again. And then he seems to be a lot younger um, than he was initially depicted. Um, Jim, Katie, I think, I don't want to ruin anything about Jim because there's a twist with him. Uh, but that whole storyline, I had a little bit of a hard time believing how he gets from point A to point B at the house. Um, and then there's Liam. And Liam does a couple things that I thought were very unforgivable. And I feel like Philip Fricasse tries to make him a redeemable character by the end of it. And because of some of his actions um, towards Henry, um, based on what we know about his past, I just don't believe that that would have happened. So I do feel that the characters kind of evolved into better and more developed characters by the end, but I do not think that their official um, introductions were solidified the way Fracasse would have wanted them to be, if that makes sense. That being said, it was very interesting to read about all of them. Their backstories are all absolutely horrific. They're all very different. I love the path that got them from point A to point B, um, how they all ended up in this plot to kidnap Henry. Um, and then I love kind of watching what happens to them. Uh, one of the things I will say about this novel is that um, I do think that a lot of the bad guys get what they deserve, and I thought it was in very dramatic, over-the-top, almost like horror novel cheesy ways. I thought it was absolutely um, horrific and and just justified, if that makes sense. I, I did love the unraveling of... Um, of the bad guys. I thought that was really, really interesting. Um, and then obviously we have to talk about the fact that this is at the core root, um, a cosmic horror story. I'm going to call it cosmic horror because the way that they talk about this creature of the forest that Henry connects with, um, it to me very, very much felt like an old one or like an ancient one kind of thing. I'm going to go with cosmic horror. Um, even though it is kind of creature feature -y, um, and the imagery of these creatures, this creature is truly terrifying. And I love how Philip Fricasse wrote about this creature in a way that as the story unfolds, the, the creature becomes more and more detailed and I can see it more and more vividly in my head and it is so freaking creepy. Um, and I loved its connection with Henry. I loved its kind of animalistic yet human hybridism. One of the things I will say that bothered me about the story, and this is one of, there are two major things that like really pulled this from a five star to a four star, spoiler, if this is a four star read for me, um, was the, the ending, which I'll talk about in a moment, um, and the, the powers of this creature. But then we get to this creature who has the, an ability, and I don't want any of this to really be spoilers, but I do want to talk about a slight trigger warning for many people. This um, creature has the ability to control bugs, and the way the creature is um, talked about, that fully made sense, and this is a running theme throughout the story. And then all of a sudden it takes this weird turn and this animal can control dogs. Now what that means is there is a lot of um, harm to animals done in this story. Now it is done in a very quick, fast way. It is a lot of animal harm. It is not told too graphically. It didn't necessarily bother me to read it, but I really wish it hadn't been in there. I really wish that Fracasse had stuck with the ability to control bugs and just elaborated on that and not extended it to animals because I feel like a lot of animals were hurt in this novel um, and they didn't necessarily need to be. Um, and so that really did kind of upset me. I know that people are weird about the, um, we don't like seeing dogs hurt in horror. I get a lot of flack for it all the time because it's not something I like reading about. Um, so if you're okay reading about it, it is there. If you're not okay reading about it, uh, just so you know, it's not terrible, but it is there. Um, and it's probably about, um, maybe 10 to 15 pages 
of the 600 page book deals with that. Um, it is not overly detailed, which is good. But that really bothered me. Um, and then the ending bothered me. I thought for the vast majority of this book, I was really on board with the storyline. Um, I really liked how everybody, how everything culminated to where it was. I loved, like I said, the story arc of Henry. I thought he was a great, strong character. I really enjoyed reading about all of the characters. I thought they were all very well-rounded, very developed, uh, for the most part, very, very real, tangible. Even the bad guys, like, I didn't think any of them were necessarily likable bad guys, but they were definitely bad guys that I could read about and believe. Um, but the ending, the last, like, page and a half is what just killed it for me. Um, because it just kind of continues almost this tragic arc of Henry's story and introduces this concept that didn't need to be there. There's just one line, um, and if you've read this book, um, you, you probably know what I'm talking about, that just kind of talks about what's going to be in store for Henry for his future. And I just really wish it wasn't in there because it kind of just continues this story of tragedy for Henry and I don't think he deserves that. I think we're at a point where this kid has gone through so, so much um, that a continuation of any kind of tragedy, I wish hadn't been there. Um, not to say that this book doesn't have a happy ending, not to say that it does have a happy ending, trying really hard not to talk about spoilers, but I just did not like the tone of the last page and a half because it felt very um, pessimistic and I kind of wish that the book had ended on more of an optimistic note. Um, just very, very minor, minor thing. Um, but that really just solidified the four star read. Obviously, this is a very, very high five star, or high four star read for me. It was almost a five star. And I am so looking forward to reading Gothic and The Boys in the Valley. I think I'm going to, in, look, I think I'm absolutely going to adore those books. I really, really enjoyed Philip Fricasse's writing. Um, it's very easy to read. There is this kind of more um, old school literary tone to his writing, but it's still very contemporary and modern and easy to read. And I really, really loved that aspect of it. It's a very fun story. It was a 600 page novel, but it didn't necessarily feel like it. There were definitely times where I feel like certain scenes could have been cut down and trimmed. Like this book maybe could have lost 75 50 pages, um, and I feel like we still would have gotten most of the story, uh, but that didn't bother me too, too, too much. And then one of the last things I really want to highlight is um, Henry's relationship with his father is something that is spoken about throughout the entirety of the novel, and I loved the way it was handled. I thought it was so beautifully done, um, and it, it's a very difficult topic. Um, when you read the book, you'll understand why. And I thought it was just handled so, so beautifully. And just this story of like grieving and loss and forgiveness through a child's eyes, I thought was just absolutely brilliant. And I adored that aspect of the book. I thought Henry was a great character, very strong child lead. That's so hard to do in books. Um, again, coming of age stories are my favorite. That's why it is my favorite novel. And I would actually classify this almost as a coming of age story, except it doesn't really follow the traditional um, narrative of like a group of kids like going through traumatic things together. This is one child having to rise above his situation at a very young age after many, many traumatic events. And Henry is just an amazing character. And I loved reading about him so, 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 so much. And I just can't wait to read more from Philip Fricasse. And I'm so happy I finally, finally did. So yes, Four star read, uh, but definitely a high, high, high four star read. And I am just, I loved, I loved and loved and loved uh, reading this book. I just had a few nitpicky things with it that kind of dropped it down, um, but will not turn me off reading Philip Fricasse at all. Anyways, that is all that I have for you guys today. As always, I post every Monday and Thursday, sometimes on Saturdays. And if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. And I will catch you all in the next one. Bye.